Good morning, good afternoon, and welcome to re Reorienting Boards for the Long Term. I'm Adam Robbins. Um, I'm Head of Future of Investing Initiatives here at the Forum, and in this capacity, I lead much of the work, Forum's work on governance and the investment sector. Um, our, our work is inspired by Professor Schwab's 1973 Davos Manifesto, which states, the purpose of professional management is to serve clients, shareholders, workers, and employees, as well as societies, and to harmonize the different interests of stakeholders. 48 years later, in the midst of climate, health, and economic crises, um, this vision is more appealing than ever. But yet, as a society, we have not yet achieved it. So now we need to ask how. Um, we need to ask, um, what is the role of corporate boards in particular that can help us get there and help us put in place the right governance and financial incentives to achieve that vision? Um, We'll be with our esteemed panelists and moderator, Jean Rabi of Natasha's Investment Management, uh, to help us get there today. Um, we'll start the session with 30 minutes of public panel, followed by an interactive discussion of, um, among registered TopLink users. Um, Jean, we're in your hands for the next hour. Thank you, Adam, and good afternoon, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce our esteemed panelists. Um, Claudia Azevedo, who is uh, Chief Executive Officer at Sunai. Uh, Paul Bolke, who's chairman of the board of Nestle. Good morning. Uh, Andre Hoffman, who's chairman of uh, Masselaz and vice chair of Hoffman LaRoche. And Masayuki Yoda, who's director, president, and chief executive officer of Sumitomo Corporation. So as you can see, a broad spectrum of, uh, of activities and sectors and roles. Indeed, this panel is about how can board play a role in promoting long-term value creation through the eyes and the prism of stakeholder capitalism. As Adam referred to, this is part of the initial Davos Manifesto. And most recently, as, as yesterday, Professor Schwab was in a panel on stakeholder capitalism and gave his own definition, which from his perspective is about how corporations relate to and uh, develop uh, natural capital, natural capital in the sense of uh, you know, people, environment. And of course, it draws into question how uh, this is measured. And this is going to be uh, the topic of our session today, the role of boards in, in promoting stakeholder capitalism and uh, the role of boards in uh, being and holding corp the corporations they lead uh, to account in that respect. So uh, to start our panel, what I'll do is I'll go through uh, a few questions around this theme and asking each of our panelists to make some introductory remarks and then we'll go into perhaps more of an exchange of views through some uh, rapid fire question before leading to the second part of the session. So perhaps my first question would be to uh, Andre Hoffman, uh, building on just what I just said, how do you define stakeholder capitalism and what is your sense of the role of boards and business leaders in promoting uh, stakeholder capitalism in the context of long-term value creation for all stakeholders? Well, um, good morning, everybody. It's a great honor to be to be able to participate to this session, which I think touches to the core of what the World Economic Forum has been trying to do for many years, in, indeed for more than five decades. This notion of um, uh, shareholder, cap sorry, of stakeholder capitalism is something that really needs a, a close attention. And I would like to try to define by perhaps taking a step back. I mean, I, I was um, I went to school after 1968, and capitalism in those days had a very bad reputation. And that reputation of capitalism has stayed with us for quite a long time. Why do does capitalism uh, not really tick a lot of the boxes of people like us? Because they're, they're, uh, it's uh, primarily concentrating onto the use of financial capital in order to develop. Um, the economy. Now, many years later, we have we have reached the conclusion that capitalism is the best solution to provoke. Um, to, to propose uh, a development path for humanity. We, it, the creativity and its uh, incredibly ingenuity at making the most out of resources has been demonstrated many times, but we have to be able to start to measure the real impact we are having. Stakeholder capitalism is an attempt at trying to redefine uh, capitalism, and it's an attempt at trying to make into it, to put into emphasis the fact that we do not just need financial capital, which I would con call the constructed capital, but that we also need to take into account natural, social, and human capitals. Natural capital, obviously, is the is the planet that that. Um, 
uh, is all around us. Uh, we are not going to be able to survive much longer in the dysfunctional in nature. In fact, um, uh, David Attenborough in last year's Davos defined it as the life system support on Earth. And I couldn't agree more. I mean, I don't see uh, humanities, Homo sapiens, surviving long if all other species disappear. Um, I mean, just as an anecdote and to quote a number, uh, the WWF report published three months ago talked about 57% of vertebrate uh, species having disappeared in the last 40 years. I mean, more than half of vertebrate species known have been destroyed by our economic activity. And I think it's very important to keep that in mind. I mean, we need to go further. Um, we also need to take account the social um, in capitals. I mean, social systems are not functioning as well as they could. We're having a, a disproportionate growth of certain assets and a, a non-inclusive inclusive development of the planet. And then we also need to look, of course, at the human capital, at people, us, homo sapiens. How can we work together? Where is the talent? Where, where, how can we develop it? And can we, how can we make sure that we create a growth pattern? <laughs> these, these, um, this leads me to give a new definition of, um, uh, say, called the capitalism. And why is it important to businesses? Uh, my main professional activity is vice chair of the board of Hoffman La Roche, Roche Groups. Um, we are a family company. I'm the fourth generation. I do hope that the children of my children will be able in the future to have the same sort of influence of the company that I have. And that is only going to be possible if the company still exists. So we need to think of a sustainability criteria, a sustainability uh, philosophy, and to this belongs this notion of being able to grow in a way which satisfies their stakeholders uh, all around us. Now, just my last point, um, and it's a point that's not going to make me very popular among my fellow shareholders, but I think that the owners of corporations like Roche, which employ 100,000 people moving in pharmaceutical and health across the planet, the ownership of this company is not the shareholders. The owners are the stakeholders, the people who benefit from the action of Roche, the people who, in, in our case, the patient. So um, if we want to drive a sustainable economy, if we want to move forward in a sustainable manner at business level, we need to get out of this notion of just working for shareholders, maximizing the short-term benefit for shareholders. We need to think long-term for society on a broader base and satisfying the stakeholders. I would leave it at that if that's all right, John. Yes, of course. Thank you, Andre. Uh, speaking, building on what you just said, perhaps I'll turn over to Claudia Azevedo. As the single largest employer in Portugal, of course, you have uh, you are very focused on on, on bringing your, for, your your employees into that the transformation journey. 2020 was a particular year for everyone. Uh, can you share some comments and insights on that? Again, from the angle of what we just talked about, stakeholder capitalism, human capital, and societal issues. Sure. Oh, thank you very much, and uh, good morning, everybody. Hope everybody is well and, and safe, and thank you for inviting me to speak on a, a subject that I'm, I'm passionate about. Um, putting this in, in the framework of boards and stakeholder capitalism, we are a, a di diversified group, as you said. And so I, I would say it's a mixture of a, a purpose, a culture, and a governance. And starting off with the governance, uh, we give autonomy to the businesses to create the conditions to make it possible and to be valued that uh, the frontline workers and every worker is part of the transformation, leads the transformation. Uh, we have so many different businesses. I think that's the only uh, form we can do it because each business has its, has its challenges. In terms of a purpose, it's, it's very important. We are a 60-year-old company that's always had the same mission, which is to create economic and social value. And uh, I took over as CEO two years ago, and people would say, but Cloud, it's, it's impossible. You can't have uh, market returns and social value. And I think that nobody would say that this year. So that the progress that has been done has been amazing. I think in, in uh, the business community in the world, every, everybody thinks now it's obvious that uh, you should have a mission that is to create economic and social value. Um, and the culture, a culture of trust, of transparency, where everybody can feel that uh, they have a, a, a voice. In terms of board of, of a diversified company, we, we, have, we also have, as we call a little bit as a joke, the Sonai Glue. Uh, so we have a series of forums, uh, committees, sustainability committee, human resources committee, talent, and 
And these are, uh, for example, our talent committee is 30 years old. It's, it's not a new, <laughs> a new thing. We have some new forums uh, and we have the traditional forums like risk forum, et cetera, but that bind us together. We have also what we call in the, our strategy, annual strategy process, we have what we call the yearly guidelines. So in terms of the us at the holding level, we tell each business two or three very simple things that we would like them to address in that year's um, strategy progress, for example, digital, employee, employee satisfaction, so to make sure that the, also the businesses, and really they don't need to, but just to make sure that they, they know what, what will be valued at, at, at corporate level. Also, we have forums where uh, all CEOs sit and we try a, and discuss. We have businesses that have been very touched by the pandemic uh, and businesses that uh, have done well because they're in the sectors and we try and get the best out of, of, out of everybody. Uh, lastly, I would say communication is, has been key, very a lot. Uh, communication in terms of us communicating with the different businesses. And, and in that sense, I think uh, the, uh, COVID has helped us with all the tools, digital tools, and uh, I was telling the panel before we, we joined that we had, a, for example, in our retail business, we had a meeting every single year, a very important meeting, where there was a, a thousand people present. Uh, and this year, of course, we couldn't do it. So we did a, a virtual meeting with 9,000 people. Uh, and when we look to the future, we say we'll probably keep both because they play very different roles. Uh, and the importance of communication has been uh, amazing. We gave everybody at our food retailing, for example, a smartphone, um, and we use that also for uh, uh, um, surveys to, to see how people are doing, to information. I think information is key in this, in this transformation. Claudia, I'd like to come back to you uh, in a few minutes, because you said a lot of progress has been made. And for me, the question is whether or not 2020 is conjunctural or structural in that progress. But first, perhaps go through our, all of our panelists. Now it's time for Yudosan to share with us some of his thoughts as Sumitomo Corporation has been a long-term believer in these issues. And now, what is your perspective on uh, the progress that needs still to be made to address these uh, economic, social, and environmental issues in terms of of uh, stakeholder within the prism again of stakeholder prism and the role of boards. Thank you very much, uh, Jen. Um, it's a great honor to participate in this uh, uh, forum. And uh, uh, let me touch upon one uh, basic uh, principle uh, left by our Mr. Uh, uh, Sumitomo 450 years ago so as to make uh, our company a, a sustainable. I think uh, 450 years history is long enough, I hope. <laughs> um, he simply said that uh, the business always uh, have to take a look at the needs of the society because uh, society keep, keeps on changing. Then the, our business always have to uh, cope with uh, the changing times. As we all know that uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, has changed our um, business environment very, very dramatically. And we have to adjust ourselves. Our corporate group is um, facing uh, difficulties. But the uh, most important thing we have to take a look at is um, what is the needs of the society? Uh, what is the, the, the social issues uh, we have to tackle on through our businesses? Uh, we, uh, last year, we uh, identified six uh, social issues, among which uh, one of the, the most, most important issue is uh, climate change. Uh, we have to tackle on this uh, climate change issues through our businesses. So we have to redesign our business and we have to change our portfolio uh, so as to cope with this um, uh, requirement from the society as of today on the global basis. Um, when we um, think about this um, uh, COVID issue, uh, our human beings went through the similar uh, crisis 100 years ago when our company, Sumitomo Corporation, was born. Then the other time, the total population of the people on the globe was only 1.9 bil uh, billion people. Today, we have over 7 billion people. The, the, the similar crisis about uh, the situation we have today is completely different. Uh, what we have to do, uh, the, the size of the macro view uh, we have to keep in our consideration is 
different completely. Uh, therefore, um, it is very important for our board to make sure that the group companies are over 900 uh, always think about this um, uh, changing needs of the society so as to redesign uh, themselves, so as to make it sustainable. Uh, this is what we are doing every day. Thank you very much. Thank you. And building on what you just said, Yudasan, Paul, Paul um, perhaps when you think about transformation, it's about the corporation, but also its partners and suppliers. How do you think about, uh, to, take it to, to use the acronym that everybody uses now, ESG, in terms of reporting and metrics, not only for the corporation itself, but for, for its suppliers and partners? And how do, we, how do large corporations, such as yours, can lead the momentum into, uh, into promoting these considerations? Uh, before answering that, um, uh, Jean, let, let me go back to first the title of, 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 of this session, which is Reorienting Boards for the Long Term. And actually, I don't, I wonder, is it reorienting or is it just remembering, refreshing what actually boards should do? Uh, it is somewhere forward to basics. I always have thought, always thought that, that economic activity should serve society. And by serving society, it creates value. And that value then reverts back into somewhere shareholder value at the end. But, and, and we call that initially creating shared value, which is uh, true products, true caring for the communities you work in, true working with suppliers, true um, uh, treating well your, 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 your employees, et cetera. You create value on many, many fronts. And to do that over time, long term, you actually also care for next generation, for the planet, et cetera. Long-term view is what boards should have as first priority. We, it's somewhere the long-term inspiration. Yes, indeed, short-term intensity. And in the days of today, there's a lot of that. So first uh, comment on this. Then you, you ask how should corporations like Nestle do that with uh, uh, linked with ESG, et cetera. Well, at the end of the day, somewhere, we have narrowed down everything, which was economic activity to financial reporting, um, which is which is has created this this narrow view also on capitalism that that Andrea was calling it. Capitalism was basically linked with resources, not money alone. Money was part of it, and it has been over time narrowed down because of the prevalence of financial uh, has narrowed down to only financial. That's why it has a bad name. I don't even think that stakeholder capitalism has a good chance of sympathizing with the world of public because of the word capitalism. But that's another story. Now, ESG. Uh, ESG is, is, hey, we have to connect with the broader world out there. Uh, we have been, uh, me as a company, we have been com uh, communicating on 40 commitments out to ex-financials ex already for many years in that framing of creating shared value. If you, if, the problem is you don't connect actually because everybody has another measurement and ESG and this whole, uh, also the ESG framework that we are now working in, in, in uh, with the web is trying to have a common language on reporting back, communicating, saying what you do, measure and being uh, taken responsible on what you do uh, and, and on all these fronts. Um, look, at the end of the day, that's the role of, a, uh, of the board to maintain that broader framework, the longer term view. We Today, uh, companies are drawn into the short term because, hey, we are in a big crisis. But still, it's the board's job to maintain things in balance, to, to assure that short term action is taken, but to maintain the broader uh, perspective of things. So not to park the ESG dimension of a company. Actually, somewhere, and, and as to finish, a board has always says to somewhere somebody told, nose in and hands out. And now is the time somewhere to nose in and all hands on deck and, and with different roles. But, and that is, uh, I think, um, my last phrase to just say, that's the role, of a job, uh, the, the, the role of a board, to maintain that framework, to maintain that context, to maintain the long term, to be sure that short term is served and to see that all stakeholders uh, are, are served too, because they are responsible for risk. The board is responsible for risk today, tomorrow, after tomorrow. And ESG is caring, phrasing, embracing the future risk if you don't care for it. So it's a fundamental responsibility of the board to go about that. 
Thank you. We have about 10 minutes uh, remaining. So before going to the rapid fire questions, I'd like to ask a follow-up question to each of our panelists, starting again now this time by alphabetical order. So Claudia, as I was alluding to uh, in, uh, in my remarks a few minutes ago, you mentioned lots of progress has been made on some of these issues in 2020. But the context, one has to agree, has been very particular. Do you think this is structural or, or just conjectural? And how do we ensure that it's structural, perhaps? In, in a minute or two, if I may ask. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Jean. In a minute or two, very tough. I think it's a structural. I think it's structural. We, we were, uh, in 2020, we had the, uh, you know, it's, I like, like most of the people, we made things that we thought were impossible possible. And it would be a shame if we didn't continue <laughs> on, on that uh, track. We saw as, as frontal line workers, as food retailers, we saw that we had unbeatable dedication of our people. And uh, that's only possible because of our, our culture and, uh, uh, and our lived purpose. And, and as a board, that's also one of the most important things uh, to have. And so we can't let this not be structural. <laughs> We had a real, I think we had a real life test of how important values and purpose and transparency were. And, uh, and it would be a shame, a shame, not more than a shame. Uh, it would be not being a long living company if we didn't make this structural for, for a better of society. Speaking of structural considerations, Paul, perhaps going back to what you just said, it's about financial. Right now, there's a tendency to, to focus too much on financial reporting and short termism. Uh, perhaps, uh, one very minor illustration of that, but I'd be curious in your perspective, uh, should quarterly be reporting be the measure of, 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 of communication to your stakeholders? Because that's right now the rhythm in which corporations have adopted over, all, over pretty much uh, all regulatory space. So your perspective on that in a minute. Well, we didn't. We are not fully quarterly reporting. Uh, so uh, the quarterly reporting, I leave that uh, to another discussion per se. I don't think um, that, that that's, that's actually trauma, traumatic. Um, it's agony, uh, but, but that's another story. Companies cannot be run quarter by quarter. Um, uh, quarter by quarter, actually, day by day, is this short-term intensity that companies should have. That's true. But that should not all be the full panacea. Uh, it's like ESG reporting, and we're really trying to, to organize and structure that. It's, it's going to be hard to have a quarterly reporting on ESG anyhow. It is not relevant. It's, it's, it, so uh, for me, uh, you have to connect with your shareholders. You have to connect with investors. You have to connect uh, on, on um, a need to, to have basis. Every year, you make a point formally, fully structured and fully audited and all that on the financials. It's going to, and the ESG should be starting to be uh, somewhere measured there too. It's true. So, um, so the quarterly reporting is actually somewhere a symbol of the French world uh, dominating the whole discussion. Yet at the same time, the French world is changing too. They start to see that the, 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 the quarterly reporting is only that what it is. Uh, but you don't, you lose perspective on the broader issues. And if you speak about all stakeholders, well, uh, with quarterly reporting, that does not serve. So more and more of the investors do see that. And, and, and uh, we're living in a society somewhere that short term is, um, and more now because of the crisis, but, but short term is, uh, is, is dominating. And, and again, I mentioned before, it is somewhere uh, to, to companies and boards to maintain that perspective, the contextual thinking in time, um, uh, to, uh, to also comment on the short term results quarterly and to put that always in the perspective of uh, the longer term. If, if short term dominates everything, we wouldn't invest in R&D, we wouldn't invest in, in, in the pipeline, we wouldn't invest in new products because there is risk linked to the, et cetera. So, and it is that balance. It's a matter of balance. Uh, it's a balance between longer term, and we call it inspiration, and short term. It's clear that you don't get, you don't get to the long term if you don't survive the short term. So it's a matter of balance. Where is that balance to be found? It is on the top of the company. And, and as, if you think about purpose, the, uh, the what, the how, and the why of companies, the defining all of that, what is that? At the, at the end of the day, it's a way of formulating this context to put things in, in perspective. And that's uh, the fundamental responsibility of a board. It is to make sure that that is in place, that that gyro scope of a company is in place. And to do that, taking care of all stakeholders, thinking about that, 
And look, uh, somewhere inside that, that the companies that do care about all these uh, multi-stakeholders are more successful. Well, what, what is the cause and effect thing? I, uh, is it more successful because they care about ESG? I think companies that are caring for ESG are just best, better led, better structured, and as such, they're more successful. So ESG is definitely part of a well-structured company. Speaking of that, Andre, do you think we should be more disruptive about board composition when it comes to ESG thinking? More specialists, more environmentalists, uh, people who have perhaps greater experience. Is that something that should be part of the roadmap? Absolutely. I, th I think it's important if you want to have a, a, a strong board to have a diversity of opinion. But I would like to react to two things. First of all, I don't think this is a question of somebody is right and somebody is wrong. It's a natural evolution, evolution sorry, of the way we create values. We cannot create value without yes. We cannot continue to create value just on focusing on financial inputs only. At the moment, if you run a company, the only thing you look at is the profit line. And um, if, you, if you happen to introduce other elements into your decision criteria, these are things that you do in-house. There is no unified way of reporting on these things. Now, the second point I wanted to make, that um, the initiative that the WEF is, um, is trying to, to propose at the moment to all our members, and I understand that we've, we've met some success with that, uh, thanks to Paul's efforts among others, since uh, a number of companies are going to report according to these new e sets of ESG metrics that the International Business Council within the WEF has worked on and has, cre has created. But that's about reporting. That's about rebuilding trust with society around us. It's about being transparent about what businesses are doing. Because deep down inside, it's nothing else than an accounting problem. At the moment, we account for financial flows when we should be really accounting for impact. What impact do our businesses have on the natural, on the social, and on the human capital? If we create a system which will be just as accepted as the general accounting principles, uh, we will be able to report in a more transparent ways, and that will reassure all stakeholders that we are actually really trying to do what is best for the community and not just what is best for our, for our shareholders. But I would like to propose that um, accounting has two levels there. You have the accounting that you bring into the public and internal the analytical accounting, the help to decision. What we urgently need as a society in a broader sense is that we need to understand how businesses take their decisions. And at the moment, if I am building a new factory or if I'm entering into a new partnership, the first thing I look at is, will it be profitable to do so? Now, that's not taking into account the impact that my activities will have on the environmental, the social and the human capital. And I think it's very important that we uh, agree soon, uh, of course that will not happen overnight, that we agree soon onto a common way of describing these activities so that we can run all these companies in a proper way. If we impact, pro sorry, if we um, uh, account properly for impact, we could reverse the destruction mechanism that has been happening on the planet for the past 250 years of industrial age. We have actively destroyed the planet on the basis of short-term profit maximization. If we can introduce the concept of, short, uh, of, of impact maximization, of benefit for all stakeholders, we have a chance of repairing the damage done. And that, for me, is the most exciting thing I can think of. Uh, thinking of your investment activities, you know, if you could invest into something that is positive, if you can invest in something that is not only based on conversion of natural resources into financial benefits, we could actually change the planet. In fact, this is very much linked to technology. Uh, we are getting to a point where we, we, we can say that investing in ESG savvy companies, the one that uh, uh, Paul was just referring to, the, um, is a possibility of getting huge investment gains in going forward. The green economy is a wonderful opportunity, and uh, being able to report for stakeholders will allow us to benefit from that. So forget about technology. Don't invest in tech stocks. Invest in ESG stocks as for now. Thank you. And on this note, perhaps we go to, uh, just to conclude the panel on a rapid fire question. And um, I'll start first with you, Dasan. And perhaps if you want to react to some of the comments made, feel free. Uh, in, in, in one word in a, or in a few words, uh, what is the single most important thing board should focus on in 2021 to promote and lead on stakeholder capitalism? 
think uh, we have to engage in the social issues and uh, we have to set our go own goals and uh, we do planning and uh, act and we monitor the actual executive uh, level of the works and progress and we improve, improve it. That's what we have to do. Claudia? Yes, a, a bit on, on, on the same level. I think we have to, uh, as a board, focus on on two or three things that uh, are important for us. I mean, uh, um, because it, we can go deeper in that. And we have picked two, two uh, planets and two in people. Measure it, set ambitious goals, involve everybody, and reward everybody. Uh, as boards, I think we, we can do that. Andre? Well, I would like to use one key word, which is interdependence. Uh, we, are not, we, we are not acting alone. We are acting as part of society. The question, okay. to, should we have more diverse boards, is exactly for that. We want to introduce more different viewpoints in our, com in, in our companies sure. into the way we make decisions. So interdependence and the, 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 the COVID crisis has demonstrated into which extent this is relevant. Our current system is weak because we only think about narrow's agenda. We need to broaden our horizon and into produce a bit more complexity into the way we take decisions. And Paul, one last word from you. Uh, two things for companies, uh, long-term inspiration, short-term intensity, and for boards, from nose in and hands out towards uh, nose in and all hands on deck. Thank you for all these comments. Thank you very much to our panelists. We will now move to a second session for uh, Toppling participants. Thank you all the, for, to all of you who have joined us from the web forum. And I hope this contributed to uh, your, your own thoughts and your own efforts in your own organizations to promote stakeholder capitalism, think about the metrics to, to measure progress, and of course, to, uh, to bring a diverse perspective to these issues which are very, very, which are very complex. Thank you all.